And I came to speak about something else, but you have this new policy that you're proposing in which you are declaring war on the public. You have this policy that says give name and address. So I'm not going to do that now. In fact, I'm going to make it a point to violate every single one of these policies as often as I can and then dare you to do something about it. This is uh, really incredible to me that the first meeting, the first action of this new administration is to suppress the speech of the public. And as Mr. Malfitano rightly uh, pointed out, you're cutting that down by about 70% at the minimum, and maybe more. The language in here is absurd, right from the beginning. The Board of Education encourages members of the public to not only attend meetings, but also to express their views as to matters affecting the school district. No, you do not. I've been coming to these meetings since 2008, and this school board has never encourage people to come forward with issues of concern. What you want is people to come up here and pat you on the back and praise you. Those people can speak all day long. I've watched it many times. This is offensive, what you were proposing here. And I'm going to tell you something. You're declaring war on me and my right to speak and to criticize this board and talk about all of the malfeasance and corruption going on in this district after all that I've reported over the past six years? You know that what I've been reporting is true. That's why you fired Mr. Quinn. He didn't retire. That's why you're getting rid of Mr. Gallagher and Mr. Purdy, because of the rampant corruption in the district. And the only way that people would know about that is by people like myself and Mr. Dano and others, Ms. Ecker, getting up and speaking about it because this board has been deaf, dumb, and blind for years. You don't like, uh, you want to refrain from personal attacks. Totally subjective. Unenforceable. Most of this is probably unconstitutional. Be prepared to offer supporting evidence or any factual assertions Request if requested by a board member, that smells like David Lacker a mile away. So now, not only do we not get responses from the board, and you have not responded to the to members of the public, it's been brought up many times. Your own CAC recommended it. Ms. Eckers talked about it many times. You don't respond to the public. And you want to say that, well, maybe we, uh, Mr. Fernandez, Mr. Hasty said, well, maybe we should have that as part of the policy. It is part of the policy. It's been the part of the policy all along. You've just ignored it. You want to have a consent agenda. You want to have executive sessions before the meeting. What you really want is just hold the meetings in Miss Merchant's living room. Right? Isn't that the point of this? That you don't want to actually have the public involved at all. You certainly don't want the public to be uh, critical. I'm going to tell you, people in this town know I have a website. And I have been, I think, kind over the last years. Efforts have been made to fix a lot of the problems in the school district. I can tell you that if you are proposing this, you are going to get global thermonuclear war from me. I am going to drop every single document I have, every story of corruption I have. But I have another thing. Why is Mr. Locker sitting up where he's sitting? The tradition of the school district is that when the board president leaves office, they move down to this seat. I've watched it for years. Why is he sitting over there? I guess he's too special to move. Or maybe he can sit there, having been disgraced as the board president, and coach Miss Merchant over the next year. Or maybe I'm violating the policy on personal attacks, but you haven't passed this resolution, so let me make a few while I'm here. Mr. Lacker shouldn't be on the board. Mr. Lacker misappropriated $13,000 in public funds for personal use. He should be referred to the district attorney's office for a grand jury to indict him. He shouldn't be sitting on a board. He certainly shouldn't be having some kind of honor sitting close to the board president. How much time I got? About 30 left. I'm not happy about this policy, and I'm going to tell you something. You have made angry the wrong person, because I am going to bury you if you put this policy through.
And next, we're um, going to talk about uh, just, you know, we, we've talked a little bit about uh, streamlining the meetings and uh, uh, eliminating that uh, additional COW, so we've already begun to take some action there. But um, I think the next topic that we could take a look at is really looking at the, uh, the public comments and uh, have some discussion around how we feel uh, we want to go about organizing that and being mindful of time uh, and time constraints and being mindful of how we're running the meeting. Uh, if anyone wants to maybe chime in uh, around that discussion. Uh, I think one of the items that we're thinking is in going from five minutes to three minutes for public discussion. Um, any thoughts on that, anyone? On the that's in line with what the city does. I think they have three minutes as well. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I would support that. I, I think it's um, definitely something that we can try. I don't think that five minutes, if the city is doing three minutes, is going to stop anybody from having an opportunity to speak. But I do think it will allow us to spend our meetings and actually have a, um, a goal in the moment. Uh, I would like to just comment, I think it's important to continue at least have the public, and I know we're not obligated to have public comment at meetings, because it is a public a meeting in public. However, I think it's something that we should make sure we do while still allow the public to have the opportunity to speak at our meetings. I just want to add, um, for the benefit of our colleagues, that we're having a conversation with um, Dr. Arnford about this. And um, one of the things I would like to see in this policy, and we probably to take a look at that and come back to it, is you know, some reciprocity in the sense that when people of color and ask questions or raise issues that we say that we're going to respond, we respond within a certain time. Now, not everything means we can or cannot uh, can respond to, but we're going to make sure that just like we put the onus on the public to be respectful and always uh, be with you, it should be on us to make sure that we respond to the public. So. Um, we're making the change in the policy, but also want to make sure we keep on the table that we should have some change in the policy that talks about how we respond back to the public with the issues and concerns. Any other comments or <coughs> discussion? Anything from you, Mr. Walker? No. So I just wanted to clarify. So this um, new policy can change. Um, our current practice so that uh, we would only have public comment at regular meetings, is that right? Yes. So we would eliminate the public comment at committee as a whole. So we would essentially be reducing it to once a month. Is that correct? That's how it reads as drafted. And in addition, now it reads that you would speak what? Whereas before we had the opportunity to possibly speak at the discretion of the president, now it's a specific decision that this would be one. And you can, as normal, you can speak if you're signed up in advance, and you can uh, additionally speak if you uh, determine that you're going to at the, at the meeting. So, um, right now, with this change of signing up in advance, there's no advantage to it because it's all going to be minutes regardless, right? Just Not necessarily. Well, well, you can still speak even if you haven't. Yeah, yeah but what I'm saying is that there's no advance before there's advance to sign up for early because you get five minutes. Now you don't, it doesn't matter if you get two minutes for girls, you can sign up for Except that it's, from the way it's written, it's at the prerogative of the board president. They would, if there was a certain number of speakers, right. they could be less than three minutes. Okay. Yeah. You have 50 speakers speaking on the same topic, right. and you might do something. Uh, in terms of so if we have a half an hour of lodge, so if we go to a timed agenda, so we don't have a meeting that's going till midnight, and we say we're going to allow a half an hour for public speaking, we go through the people that have signed up, and we can allow five more from the floor. And that would be how that would work. Right? It wouldn't be unlimited from the floor; it'd be five from the floor. Well, no, it's it's how it's, it's articulated is that we would then go out to the floor and have people raise their hands and then decide. How much time you want to allot? I don't think I don't get the impression that they would decide just which five or, or that only a certain number. Well, they don't sign up. 
You don't sign up. This is for the speakers that don't right, sign up. Saying. In the past, we've had people, you know, blow up in order or whatever. Yeah, but but I think it was more of the way it was written wasn't necessarily that we would choose five. It was more written that we would allocate time for each speaker based on the number of people who raised their hand. Well, so, um, well, I mean, if you have three minutes and you have 20 people, that's an hour. Well, this is all just for discussion and uh, to take further uh, look at how it's drafted. So what's the next What's the next step then in that? We would have to draft a resolution. There's a draft. It's, it's right. So, so this is a, is this a draft that we're going to? Yeah, so we would have a second reading. This is the first. And the okay. Second, and then if with any changes we might want to make. Yes. So I guess we need to determine if there's any changes to make. I don't think we're going to do that right, no, but right now. We, don't we want to have? Are we having a conversation in order to establish another draft? Or not. If there's any change, yeah. well, are there any changes? Yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to draw conclusions to the. Well, I just want to second what Jeffrey uh, said about making sure that we had um, a timely response to any concerns that are brought up that should be part of the resolution. I think that's always what good you know, as good stewards and good business people that we would always try to be responsive, um, you know, in as timely fashion as possible. And um, I think that we can also establish a reputation for doing that uh, as we um, continue to be responsive in getting back to people and, and uh, getting the message back out uh, in, you know, depending on, you know, what it, what it might be, and if it's as long as it's legally, uh, we're able to, to put it out in the public, we, we should do that. But I, I think that we, uh, you know, as part of our governance and part of uh, uh, having good board policy and, and practice, we should we should uh, lead by example and, and get back and, uh, you know, as, as soon as possible. Sorry, I think they were just saying add to the policy, though. Right. Is there anything to the policy? There is anything to the policy. Do we have to rename the policy, or aren't we actually speaking of different policies? Because this policy is um, revised, it's renamed from public participation to public comment. And so if we're talking about a policy that talks about board obligation to the public, wouldn't that be a separate policy or at least a renaming of this policy? And so that, I think it's a different policy, honestly. I don't think that it is the same policy and perhaps should be at a different discussion. Okay. Well, I, I can say that my point would be that we would, we would do both policies at the same time. So I think you one without the other would that that if there's one policy already that has something about this in it, we should take a look at that. <coughs> okay. There is another policy. We can address all the same. So we should so we should look at them in, uh, in conjunction with each other. Ninety three thirty seven. Where else is next? There's a section that has public discussion. So we need to make sure that the ninety three thirty seven is aligned with uh, the one that we're discussing about. So I think we should um, discuss it. Maybe put that on the agenda for next year. Ninety three thirty seven. Along with this, this one, it's not going to be solved. Okay. Well, then it would probably be prudent to discuss it when we have it. But I would certainly agree with that. Oh. Uh, moving right along. I think one of the other actions that we've we've uh, taken uh, and might also discuss is the starting of the executive session before the meeting um, and maybe getting into a routine of doing that so that we're fresh uh, and, and uh, concise in our discussion of these matters as opposed to going past midnight uh, when people you know have already uh, you know maybe exhausted a lot of their uh, Towers of concentration. <laughs> any, any comments on that? I agree. I think it's, I think it's the best idea as far as um, productivity goes. Yes. Uh, I just want to say, with regard to executive session occurring before the uh, board meeting, 
I just want to acknowledge that uh, board members as volunteers, uh, you also have full days and, uh, and full-time jobs and other obligations. So from my perspective and that of my colleagues and senior leadership, I would just want to say thank you for making the effort to get here at a time that we can do that. Um, and also just to acknowledge and remind uh, the board that legally meetings must be open in public session. You can anticipate that there might be a motion if there is something that rises to the level of executive session. You can anticipate that that might uh, occur, and you can even schedule based on that anticipation, but you can't, you can't predetermine it that that's what's going to happen, and so we will certainly always open, or I would ask that you certainly always remember to open in public session. Any further comments? Sal, you want to say anything? <laughs> um, I think uh, continuing right along, uh, we also are taking a, another look at, in, in, in this whole, uh, you know, guide towards uh, policy and governance and, and being efficient and being professional, one of the things we want to look at too is, is moving towards a, a, con a consent agenda. And we were going to try that tonight, but we have a few uh, uh, you know, resolutions that have to be uh, isolated uh, in a sense. But we will, Liz and I, will uh, take a look at maybe doing that as well, because that will also uh, save us a bit of time, because we will have already been looking at a lot of the material for well over a few weeks in advance. And then, uh, so that's, that's another action that we want to take. Exactly that little town for us is not the way we want to leave before, just for the benefit of my colleagues. Well, Liz is going to help you out here. We have to, uh, we might have to reorganize the way we are wording some of the, uh, the, the, the uh, language before we actually do that. Um, and if you want to speak to that. So if it's a roll call or something is required, how do you do that? We just have to lay that. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I just want to say with regard to using a consent agenda, basically three things. Number one, that the point and the purpose would be to free the board time for the higher level discussions, the providing of direction to the district, accountability uh, for the superintendent, that only, those are roles that only the Board of Education can provide. And if you are going through resolutions uh, in too much minutia, there is, of course, the lack of time to do that, to fulfill that function, which is uniquely the Board's. Uh, secondly, there is, this is very close to what, I mean, I've only been, I think, in two board meetings here, and I've watched some of you all on TV. And uh, I think that this is already very close to the board's practice in that you move items as groups. So I don't think it's going to be too much of a departure. Number third, it requires of, uh, of you to review um, the resolutions in advance to bring to the superintendent's attention any questions that you have. And that it really includes administration to ensure that you receive uh, timely responses and that information is shared with the full board in order for it to work. The parallel for this in, in the world of meeting with educators, for example, is trying to remove administrivia from meetings where higher level problem solving and professional development can happen. So if you think of a meeting of uh, administrators or teachers where there's a reading of memos or rules or that kind of bureaucracy and that that's not an effective use of time and really what you want to spend time talking about is the stuff that really matters, uh, then you can dispense with the administrivia
through uh, emails and other other uh, mechanisms. So we're just asking for that. Of course, please take care uh, not to provoke any discussions by email because that would run afoul of open meetings law. So information as a mechanism for giving and disseminating information that's going to appear in public and board docs anyway, we're, we're in good shape. But if you start replying all or provoking conversation, then that means that something is important enough that it has to be held for the public session. One last thing, I said three, maybe four. The fourth thing about consent agenda is that nothing prevents a board member from asking for an item to be removed and for that to be the expected uh, normal uh, practice when there is something that needs to be further discussed. I think the uh, last item here was uh, on the uh, board organization meeting, and I think really the distinction there is that we would be starting the meeting at 7 p.m. as opposed to 7 p.m. Dispensing with the committee of the whole. Right, right. Go ahead. Just saying, if we dispense with the committee of the whole, then we would just start the organizational meeting at 7, no need for any different. And that would be wonderful. Yeah, that is very involved with the committee. Let's see. I think that's. Does anyone have any other comments? Or, Jeffrey, any comments on that? Valerie? 